twice, two weeks in Creative Endeavour, gathers people making positive dents on society and shares their stories, learns and journeys to now. I'm your host, David Binstead. You're listening to episode 65, part two, featuring and celebrating my amazing 2017 co-hosts, Jennifer O'Sullivan, Caitlin Mackay and Rebecca Stewart chatting about their creative endeavours, reflecting on podcast co-hosting and looking ahead to the bright, shiny new year upcoming. Jack Chapman features one-on-one towards the end of the show. It's the end of a second year of independent digital radio, and this episode's a little more free-flowing, a little less structured than usual, but I reckon you'll love it, or your money back. Normal Service resumes with 2018 shows landing from mid-January. Yeah, I love them all, all for different reasons, probably different variations of relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's been great. And how about you, Rebecca? You, you kind of take out the title of uh, co-host with the uh, the most recordings under your belt. Yeah, nice one. Co-host with the most hosts. <laughs> <laughs> Put that on my tombstone. <laughs> pop, pop it on your LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, I, I just feel really happy and lucky to have been able to um, meet so many amazing people and, and have so much fun. And it's true that, uh, you know, there are different levels of energy I think uh, I've brought every time I don't know about you guys um, you know sometimes I really sit down I'm just like oh I'm so tired and I've got a lot on my mind you know like bringing in from the outside and then you just get into it and I don't know I mean I'm, I'm an extrovert so I get energy from other people but there is something special about the stuff that happens in this little pod um, and just being yeah really inspired by all these great minds and and having lots of laughs is just yeah somehow it just all turns around and then by the end and often the guests also say the same they're like oh I didn't know what it would be like coming in here but that was really fun you know they always seem really surprised like, oh that was actually quite fun you know that yeah <laughs> so I think it is a, a, um, something that creates good vibes um, I've always been a massive nerd for podcasts well always like in the last kind of four or five years and when I first moved back to Wellington yeah I had this idea of kind of starting my own one potentially less kind of famous people and more just kind of randos Um, and it was going to be called Cast of Thousands but mm, now working and then and then I was interviewed by David about Pomegranate and then um, now having worked with you I see how much work goes into it and how well you do it I'm just really glad that I did it this way I just get to like show up it <laughs> is don't luxury, have to do any right? of it. yeah it is <laughs> and not have to do any of the prep or any of the like post editing or anything so yeah this is like the best outcome that could have happened really for my um, nerdery about it but yeah I was yeah so I was interviewed first um, about pomegranate and that was kind of one of the first what were you going to say oh, uh, episode 40 Episode yep. 40, with and with um, Gabe from the Wellington Chocolate Factory, who's darling. And we, yeah, I guess I was quite nervous because that was, I mean, do you know what month that was? Would that have been April or something? Uh, yeah, so sort of March, April time, I think. Yeah. yeah, so I hadn't done that much press, really, for pomegranate, and so I didn't really have the spiel down like I do now. So, yeah, there was a little bit of nerves going in, but um, it soon just worked out fine. And then after that, we were off and I did heaps of interviewing and it was really great. I was actually just <laughs> reflecting on the first one that I did as a co-host, which was interviewing Christina Ballas and Hugh. What's Hugh's last name? Good question. Christina and, Christina and Hugh from Thank You Payroll. And I, that was like, that gets the award for like biggest foot and mouth because I accidentally called Thank You Payroll Good Do Good Jobs. And it was just Is like. Is that an existing thing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thing. And David had just been interviewing, but I hadn't been interviewing her, but David had just been interviewing the woman from Do Good Jobs before. And I think I'd just been chatting to her up at the table and I'd been hearing all about it. And so, yeah, I think it was like my high kind of like nerves that I just like said the wrong thing, which is like, doesn't really warm people to you when they're like, you don't even know who I am. <laughs> But luckily, um, Christina, you know, ran with it and David edited it out, which was great. And now Christina is a friend of mine. Just um, just super quickly rattling through some of the episodes that you've uh, co-hosted on. Yes. Um, after Christina and Hugh was uh, Jody and Ben. Jody from Co-Liberate, uh, Ben from Conscious Consumers. Um, yeah, actually, the girls from Co-Liberate uh, did the TED Talk at the same time as me. So, yeah, so I got to know them through this and then that as well. Yeah. Ants and Sylvia from Inspiral. 
So they get that one gets the award, I think, for like um, best friend outcomes. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Yeah, because I'd never met either of them before that podcast, and now I consider both of them good friends of mine. Yay. I mean, Sylvia ran, you know, like organized the Airbnb down at the World Forum, and it really was that feeling of like friends that you haven't met yet. You know, like we got Aww. in here, and it was just like yeah, and now yeah. So thanks, Twice Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Quick baptism of. Um lead hosting fire with Sarah Meikle from Welly on a Plate. Yes, that was quite scary. Yeah. <laughs> was it just the two of you? Well, David was there, but I was sort of like lead hosting. Right. And that was a completely different um, kettle of fish, really. Yeah, because I really had to be kind of like on it. My problem with this is that when people answer questions, I'm just there listening to them being like, shit, yeah, amazing, tell me more. And then it's like, <laughs> no, you have to also be thinking about it. So there's often these gaps where I'd be like, oh, what am I asking next? <laughs> Luckily, Sarah Mikkel is a very, you know, beautiful speaker and she knows exactly what she's talking about. So she just read off a whole lot of really great stuff and it sounded really good so <laughs> we covered up all the yeah crimes <laughs> hosting crimes that I made uh, Sam Little Yellow Bird Jenny Miss Print Co uh, Joseph and Alina from Edmund Hillary Fellowship Guy Inspiring Stories Hannah Indigo, Indigo and Iris um, and then obviously the World Forum uh, mm. episodes and then most recently uh, Lou and Chris from Arkina Foundation you had a busy old podcasting mm. year <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Lou and Chris recently from Arkena, that I feel like that one was the most comfortable one that we did. And I think part of it is just that they already know each other. I already know them. And they just, there was something about what they were talking about, which was both really well rehearsed and also really authentic, you know. So sometimes people come in and they have their spiel, don't they? And then it's like, yeah, they're doing their thing, which I'm guilty of doing as well. Um, you just have the thing that you know how to talk about. Uh, but I guess the, the beauty of what we do here is trying to get the next bit where you get someone's kind of like uh, kind of true reaction to something or a story they haven't told before. Yeah, and it just felt like that one was a real combo of all of that stuff. Yeah. Simply tip the can and pour vigorously into a glass to create a tempest of tiny bubbles yeah. which rise up to form a dense, creamy head and uniquely smooth, what? resinously hoppy mouthfeel. Such, Such stuff, stuff as dreams are made on. on. And what's it called? Not of. Yeah, uh, Full Fathom Five. So it's a reference to The Tempest by Shakespeare. Ah. Um, and they, they served this at um, Shakespeare in the Garden, which was a gig that I performed at last Sunday, Sunday before it was at Southern Cross Garden Bar and we did an improvised Shakespeare performance in the garden uh, and it was a really great time and yeah, everyone was drinking these and having like a turkey roast and and uh, we ran amongst, amongst them all in the in the, the garden bar and there was a bowling ball we, we, we invented a uh, bowling alley called Benbolios <laughs> um, which was pretty great. <laughs> Are you doing the summer Shakespeare? I'm up? not. No, this was improvised. That one's scripted. I tend to mostly do improv. Um, yeah. Uh, I would love to do that sometime. I just never have time to audition <laughs> or be in it. Oh, shit. Oh, someone That's got a bit skanked like. on that one. That's all right. That's all right. We'll work it out. <laughs> Now you get to watch the, and you want to watch the, um, you want to watch the Tempest Spiral. It's so pretty. It's very pretty beer. It's, I can smell it. It smells really fruity. Right, I'm going to do the other one. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Brave. Brave. I don't know why I did it all oh, the way down that. on the floor. That was That's impressive. So talk to me about the smell. Um, it smells quite fruity, um, but I, it tastes less fruity than it smells. You can watch it really close and it just looks so freaking pretty. <laughs> Becca's looking at us like she's about to be sick. It has a very strange taste, but I'm just worrying whether I poured it correctly or something. I think you did. It looks pretty right because right, it, it froths up and then it comes down. It just has a taste really tinny or something. I mean like metallic. Mm. <laughs> Is that the hoppy mouthfeel? No, like a tinny. Because <laughs> it's resinous hoppy mouthfeel, so maybe it's resinous. Oh, yeah, I mean, um, it's clearly, you know, what they intended it to be, and maybe just mm. not the audience for it. Getting sort of resinous grapefruit, is that a thing? Well, yeah, kind of kind yeah. of sour. Yeah, yeah, maybe it is like that grapefruity, bitter, sour thing mm. rather than You have than just metallic. eaten some chocolate, haven't you? Mm, it's Sorry, probably yeah. not the best. It does, it's, it's so thick. It just feels like a really thick beer. Love the mouth. Love the mouth feel. Mm. It is very smooth. I was about to say, how yep. did you define mouth feel? And then I realised it's just how your mouth... Feels. Feels. How it feels in the mouth. What's your mouth feel like? What's your mouth feel? Would you write a thesis about it? Oh, I could. 
<laughs> and do a podcast thesis about mouthfeel. So we, we've identified this is a great beer for watching improv Shakespeare. Yes, <laughs> yep. Anywhere else? I probably wouldn't drink this beer, given that I'm not a very beery beer drinker, and this tastes very beery, you know? <laughs> Caitlin's <laughs> pissing herself in the corner. <laughs> expert opinion, friends. <laughs> I'm just thinking of the Garage Project guys like... <laughs> <laughs> Go back to the can, la, Jesus. Um, when did you drink it? I'd probably, if I'd, I feel like it's like a pub drink, like, in a, like a pubby pub. That's how good my descriptions are right now. I'm laughing, but I've got nothing better, so I'm, I shouldn't. Great, I'll keep going. I'm drinking in a pubby pub on a stoolie stool it's with my berry beer. And my friendly friends. Drink away. I'm not going to stop drinking this. I'm going to keep going and see if I change my opinion. But and, and your manny man. I'm a manny man. My lady lads. Having some chatty chats. Yeah. Oh, it's a good day. It's a good day. Bloody Kiwis. Bloody yeah, nah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I just really am into like the the whole Shakespeareanness of it. Like the can's really great. It's got like a sweet um it's got a ship on it, it's got storms. It's yeah. got a great name. Here's the name of the artist here. Really? Stacy Isles. Good job, Stacy. Uh David, you could definitely create a whole new podcast of non beer drinkers try beer and destroy beer <laughs> hold that thought <laughs> I did a, um, a couple of years ago I bought one of those like grab one tickets tickets vouchers that was like a, um, a bike hire and a picnic in Martinborough and so you got a couple of bikes you got a sweet picnic and then you just rode around the uh, the I was going to say bottle stores that's not what they are <laughs> the vineyards the bottleos the you bottleos. did, you yeah. did it wrong. Pal- palace of <laughs> bottleo I think it's called <laughs> We just rode our bikes around the bottleos and uh, and then tried a whole bunch of wines. But we ended up doing like some live tweeting. We were like describing the wine flavors as if we were like incredibly wanky, uh, incredibly wanky wine critics and things like you know like it tastes like a tire on a hot summer day. Wow! Did you get any weird wine connoisseur types following you afterwards? And they're like, this girl knows her stuff. Tragically, no. I feel like they were a little bit too far towards crazy for people to go like hmm interesting they were like well, what are you doing <laughs> how many wines have you had and the answer was quite a few leave the bottle low <laughs> no <laughs> I refuse the um, tourism office in Martin is just like crying now going <laughs> someone has just said we don't do wine tours we do bottle tours. Bottle store tours. <laughs> <laughs> Saying that, they have Toast Martin Brow out there, which is just a shit show. Isn't so it I, amazing? I think that they're probably not uh, you know, not too, too concerned worried. with uh, the class of things. <laughs> okay, now I really want to, though, like do a bottle tour of Wellington. <laughs> and I like, just walk in and be like, hello, we just want to do some wine tasting. Yeah. <laughs> what have you got open at the moment? Nothing. What's, what's in your cellar? <laughs> yeah. Uh, mold, rats. <laughs> we're, we're on bikes. It's legit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's Hi. fine. I'm wearing a hat. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> I would so do that. Oh, maybe it's a fringe show for next year. I won't do that. Someone else will. Or will they? Oh, God. Just uh, as a brief interlude to our second beverage tasting, I'm really interested in either do you believe in resolutions, like New Year's resolutions, or do you have anything that you kind of want to commit to do either before the end of the year, like watching yourself on video, <laughs> A little bit narcissistic, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, we're trying to encourage you. <laughs> You've ruined it. <laughs> Do it. Watch yourself. Be happy. <laughs> um, or fringe show ideas as examples of things that you are perhaps thinking of resolving to do next year. I like the idea of like setting intentions less than, uh, more than, sorry, resolutions. Like I don't. I'm not a fan of like, I'm going to go to the gym three times a week from now on. Because I've tried that. It didn't really work. But I like uh, more along the lines of going like, this year I want to focus more on. Um, And I think having the time of going like, what was this year like? Did I like that? Did I enjoy it? Great. What do I want to try next year? That's a good way of doing things. Um, I think every year for the last... I don't know how many years I've, I've resolved, if, if that's the right word, to say no more often, um, which is a weird thing, given that I'm improviser and we train people to say yes. Um, but I feel like there comes a point where you've said yes too much and you have to then learn how and when to say no again. Yeah, maybe improv like uh, was a bad training for you. Yes and, I think but you just do yes and in every uh, I know. space in your life. I do yes and like crazy. I think what it is is that even when you're an improviser as well, you t- you get taught yes and until the point where you stop judging your 
you stop judging things before you agree to them. And then you, once you're at that point where you relax and you can actually do the improv, then you go, right, now I'm going to be selective because I have, it's so built into me that I've got all the instincts and the habits that it's time now for me to decide when I'm going to say yes and to which offers. And that's when you get incredible improvisers that are so comfortable on stage and do amazing things that you didn't know were possible because if you literally do just say yes to everything, it doesn't always actually go <laughs> that well. That well. Yeah, right. You do have to be. That's interesting. Yeah. And I think it's 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 kind of like, you know, in, in maths and science and stuff in school in third and fourth form, or sorry, year nine and ten. <laughs> God, age. Um, you know, you learn about these these scientific concepts and every every year you go back into the next class and they go, cool, remember that stuff we told you? It's not quite like that. But we had to so teach you that oh, yeah. so that you could understand this. And so, it's, so yes and is one of those things that you get taught it and then once you've got it, they go, great, we're going to take the training wheels off now and show you how to do the next stage. Mm. Um, so yeah, I have to learn how to say no <laughs> and, and uh, be okay with it. I think that's a big thing. I'm just working on personal boundaries. I think personal boundaries is something everybody should work on. You're fine. I would have said something because I'm good at my personal boundaries. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, just getting comfortable with that sort of stuff. Oh, cool. How about you, Rebecca? Yeah, a couple of things that I'm trying to kind of work on at the moment. I'm so with you that it's not about resolutions. And I've kind of, yeah, I mean, that stuff doesn't really work for me if it's only once a year because I feel like I'm always trying to think about what I could do differently or, you know, yeah, so reflecting and, and setting intentions. I guess the two things are, um, yeah, I mean, starting my own business really has just like completely... I thought that I had really good boundaries. I thought that I was really good at, you know, having work-life balance, but this is just a whole different ball game. And it's really, it's just eaten me up. It's eaten up every single minute of my time and of my energy and of my, like, a lot of stuff around, um, like, self-worth as well. There's there's some weird stuff that's been happening around, like, never being enough and never doing enough, which I've never really had before in my life. So over the last few months, it's um, I've really tried to kind of pull back a lot, have a lot better balance, have days off in the weekend and things like that, and just be kind of... What? Yeah. <laughs> and just be satisfied with, like, the amount that I'm putting out there. Um, so that's been really nice. Yeah. Um, Something I do say every year is that I really just want to make my bed because if my bed is made, <laughs> I feel feels like so my good. life is in order. But I do I do it probably three days a year. So that, yeah, that'll be another <laughs> one this year as well. It is magic. Making your yeah. bed just feels so... And then when you get into it, I'm, I'm like, am I in a hotel? Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to come home to. Yeah. It's nice to come home to. Yeah. My, bed. my bedroom just feels just so much calmer as soon as I've just pulled... Because I just have a duvet. So I just pull yeah. a duvet up yeah. and suddenly I'm just it like... It takes one second amazing. and yet I can't do it any morning. I'm just like... Oh, <laughs> try making it while you're still in it. Like shuffle underneath it and just yeah. like shuffle and the just, sheet out and then get out. And yeah, then you're yeah. like, well, it's basically done. It's done. Yeah. Do you think um, <laughs> Deliver Easy would like put that as an add on service to actually make your bed for you? <laughs> this feels Deliver Easy. <laughs> Hi, I brought you your Thai food. Also, can so I make your, your bed? bed? <laughs> <laughs> it could go south real quick. <laughs> oh, fair point. <laughs> Amazing. How about you, Caitlin? Any intentions for the um, next year you're thinking about? Well, I think, yes, um, similar, not keen on resolutions. Um, also, I feel like I couldn't now have a resolution because I had a really drunk Uber home where I got really deep with the Uber person and was <laughs> like, man, you can you can change any time of the year. Why do we, people wait to change till New Year's? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> I feel like we really can like, yeah, give me my five-star rating. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Um, I thought I was being so wise, and then I woke up the next day, I was like, man, what a dick. He was probably like, get out. <laughs> um, and, and why is that Uber car parked in my drive? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, did I steal the car? <laughs> um I don't really have. I don't generally have news resolutions, but I am at currently reading the magical life-changing art of giving less of a. F- oh, mm. yes. Um, I'm listening to it on audiobook because oh. I got real lazy. That is, sweet. and also reading has made me real tired. I sound like an old yeah. lady. Mm. What are, What are some lessons from that book? Um, so she talks about having a f- budget, and you essentially have to write out all the things that you give a f- about, and they're deciding what you're actually going to allocate effort to mm. and then deciding what things you shouldn't. That's brilliant. Uh, yeah. And then it gets really deep into some stuff like should you care about the fact that your auntie is super religious and she wants to talk to you about religion at Christmas and you sit there and endure a lecture for an hour because you live in sin with your partner or do you go, 
auntie, I don't care. But you got to like, she also talks a lot about not being an asshole. That's quite yeah. good. It's like, it's there's like a difference that between, fine line. Yeah, there's a difference between not <laughs> being a f- yeah, yeah. yeah. Like so, having personal boundaries. Yeah. So many bleeps in this episode. <laughs> so You're welcome. It found it sounds like an like an actual art, like being able to do yeah, being able to um yeah, to say you don't care about something without also coming off like a jerk. Um so yeah. Uh that's been really interesting. And then I think then in turn that was just in general for me to kind of raise my assertiveness, being more assertive about saying things I guess kind of similar to you Jen about saying no um, I think I've ended up in some really ridiculous situations where I've just been like I should have just said no mm. or should, should be like doing but this. sometimes you don't dumb. know that it's going to be done before you do it oh either. definitely that's yeah. true but then you just have to go like okay what were the warning signs like what what should I have maybe paid attention to that I didn't clock yeah yeah mm. somebody walked walk towards you with a microphone in his hand <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> quick come right now come with me if you want to record um uh it, it, this, I'm trying to, there's a sentence that's bouncing in my head which is like being able to say to people I'm sorry I'm not able to prioritise that right now yeah. so it's not I'm, I can't like no I don't want to but it's literally like I have other priorities and that yeah. can't be top I don't of my have list. capacity but yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a good thing because it's like yeah everyone just has a limited yeah, yeah. budget or a yeah. bucket of things that they can do and that's understandable You're listening to David on Twice Two Weeks in Creative Endeavour, episode 65B, with my 2017 co-hosts reflecting on a year of building creative practices across broad disciplines and roles. I realised this year that I hit rock bottom in terms of being too polite, (laughs) I think, (laughs) when I ended up at an Airbnb where I was staying with this little old couple that were really chatty. And I'd had a really long day and it was like nine o'clock at night and I like had to search some food in Auckland and I brought back the food and they hadn't given me any cutlery and I was in this like little room off to myself and then the chatty couple were in the kitchen and I needed to get some cutlery but I didn't want to go in there because I knew that they would talk to me and I knew I didn't have it in me to be like, oh, I just want to go to my room. I knew in my head mm. I couldn't say that. Yeah. So I ate with a pair of tweezers. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it was like no, it was like it was like noodles. So they were brand new tweezers. That's improvising. They though. were brand new. Yeah. That's amazing. Plastic tweezers, and I sat in my bed and like. It must have taken hours. Yeah, it did. <laughs> or oh, the other thing, I didn't want them to judge me for like eating in the room. Like yeah. that's where my head was at. And then um, a good friend of mine. Uh, came and visited me the next day in Auckland. She's like, oh, you've got to kind of just toughen up a little. I was like, shit, I do. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. It was like a, nice a whole new low. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But it's the boundaries thing, isn't it? <laughs> um, it's being able to say, um, uh, hey, how's it going? I'm exhausted, so I'm just going to wave at you and then I'm going to go. And being okay with it. Yeah. And that delivering. is a very awkward situation, though. Yeah. Yeah. I right. even practiced it in my head, and I just couldn't. Couldn't do it. I couldn't. I was like, I just, I'll stay in my room. <sighs> I'm so pleased you had clean tweezers available. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you could have also really done, like, pencil image. chopsticks. That's another option. Just FYI, pencil oh. chopsticks. And the, I haven't done that. I just thought of it. <laughs> I actually got the tweezers, like, for free. Like, I'd bought something with from the... the meals? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I'd bought something and then it, from the pharmacy and they're like, it comes with some free tweezers. Yeah, like, like a little, <laughs> like, first aid kit. And I was like, oh, great. <laughs> when am I going to need these? Yeah. Right now. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. <laughs> In a way, I never would have expected. That's so great. Co-liberate crew mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, chatting with them yesterday. And Jody hands out health prescriptions, even though she's not actually a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to see the health yes. prescription she gave yes. me yesterday? God. Windsurfing times lots. <laughs> that's so good. Huge. Oh, that's amazing. They and, are wonderful humans. And she's, yeah, she's signed the other side, so it's official. That's yeah. so good. I just did their, um, they've just started doing mental health first aid. Mm. Uh, and I did their fourth course just last week. So two day training on how to be a mental health first aid responder. Um, which was fascinating, really interesting. Like it focuses really specifically on uh, like people in crisis in like uh, some specific areas. So like depression, anxiety, uh, psychosis and God, substance abuse. So just four. Mm. But like it, so it was a fascinating process and just getting like doing role playing and talking to other people about how we handle things and going to have a sweet certificate and with us two years and it's just like I'm so pleased that this is a thing that you can do now and that's available and that people know is important 
And then I got to like put the skills into practice because my sister called me really upset about something and I was like, oh my gosh, I can use my training. I'm going <laughs> to use my training. <laughs> it went really well. <laughs> um, just like the record to reflect, agreeing everything you say, Jen. Um, however, if you also would like a health prescription personalised, it's probably going to cost you. Oh, really? That's a shame. <laughs> I'll yeah. write prescriptions if anyone needs one. <laughs> we um, we should round out with some final comments and thoughts and scores on our brew number two, oh, yeah. which is um, Full Fathom 5 by Garage Project. Thanks to them for the supply. What do you reckon, Jen? I'm going with two and a half. It's a big drop. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just because I just wouldn't buy it. You know what? Actually, I'm going to bump it to three because of the Shakespeare references. Um, I wouldn't buy it myself. I probably wouldn't drink it. That doesn't mean it's not good. just means it's not for me. Um, super fun pouring it. And that also gets an extra half a point. So three and a half. Okay. Is that your final <laughs> That's answer? That's my final answer. Three and a half. <laughs> three and a half. This does sound a very improvised answer. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. How about you, Rebecca? Look, I think I'm going to give my lowest score ever, which is a two. Boom. <laughs> It just isn't for me. There is a like tinny bitterness to it, like a metallic bitterness that you're right, it might be about the grapefruit or something, but for some reason, um, I'm just not digging it. However, totally uh, agree that it was super fun to pour. I would love to taste uh, some other nitro beers. <laughs> Great. Caitlin? Um, <laughs> I feel like we're just sinking this beer down. <laughs> And not the way they wish. Why, 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 <laughs> yeah. why are you to finish the year, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just on a real bitchy note. <laughs> um. <laughs> no. <laughs> do you want to bleep that or do you want to just cut it out up to you <laughs> oh man it's going to be such a fun always when I wish he'll cut things out he doesn't like I'll, I'll actually say like oh yeah you can't include this though but blah blah <laughs> um, just to just to divert do you ever sit there and go I'm definitely cutting this bit out like do you have it in your head like not really no no it's it's kind of like a, I could go into this whole separate monologue about editing audio I feel like you, you're, you're, you're making a specific thing though so it does require a different amount of editing can I just say there's going to be some changes for next year good to know <laughs> is it potentially that Garage Project will stop giving you beers after this <laughs> review <laughs> yeah that is a possibility I suppose yeah. Amazing. let's and do wine some next year do a wine yes. next year yes oh yes if you, if you can find a find a wine sponsor True. all up for it it's, it kind of comes down to some Just fundamentals. Just go with some of those bottlers out of Martinbra. <laughs> <laughs> the Geno Sullivan. So, I love callbacks. I love a good callback. It's so good. <laughs> I, uh, I should give a score to this yes. brew. I quite like this. Um, I quite like that it's um, it's pretty tasty. Really smooth. I love the theatrics of the pour. Um, I love the theatrics of when it works as a pour, and we got two good pours out of this this afternoon. Got it. I'm going to roll 3.8. Oh, nice. not quite a four. Bringing up the average. But I can see that you <laughs> hate it. <laughs> we don't hate it. Oh, I don't hate it. It's just not. You hate it. It's just not my. F- I just wouldn't order it. Uh, it's no, fine. Fair. fair. I didn't like, you know, put it back in the glass. So that's no, good. I mean, I drank all of it. Yeah. <laughs> and quite quickly. I'm not an animal. <laughs> it was free. It's yeah. in my mouth now. It was in my hand. <laughs> yeah, I, I drank it really quickly so I didn't have to taste it. That's it. <laughs> Down the head. Boom. 2018. What are you looking forward to, Jen? Oh, my God. Um, being finished studying. Uh, Travelling again. I didn't travel much this year. Um yeah, traveling, I think, actually. Yeah, I want to do some traveling. I'm going to go to Melbourne in April, go to a comedy festival there, do a show. Woohoo! It's going to be really exciting. It's a show called Awkward Threesome. I'm really excited. Um, yeah, I want to do some other traveling. There's all these places around the world that do amazing improv that I want to go to and try out. So that's on my list. Hope my art sponsor is on board, slash my husband. <laughs> With his good job. <laughs> Thank you from the arts. Yeah. <laughs> He should actually just be listed as my arts patron on all my projects. <laughs> be fine. It'll be fine. What about you? What's your What's your twenty eighteen? Um, yeah, I guess I'm looking forward to seeing where Pomegranate Kitchen goes, um, and what we kind of do with it. We've got all these big ideas, but we just have to get what we do we're like really down pat first. Um, yeah, looking forward to the new people I'm going to meet through there as well, both like the cooks 
Um, I mean, it's been such a cool year meeting all these people from different backgrounds. And yeah, also I just get to kind of tap into all of these great minds in Wellington because there's heaps of cool stuff going on here as well. But yeah, mostly just looking forward to summer, I think. I've got some cool little trips planned. With We shut down for three weeks, which is like a real blessing. Yeah, so Nelson and um, I'm actually going to Thailand for a little bit in February for oh, a wedding. Amazing. Yeah, so. So good. Yeah, lots of just like sunshine and not thinking about work. <laughs> yeah. What? What, what about, about you, Kaylin? Got it. Um... Oh, I'm actually excited. I'm going to be a bridesmaid next year. Oh. Yeah, my, my first friend ever that I made in life. Cute. <laughs> um, and we grew up as neighbours as well. She's getting married. Oh, I'm a little cool. bit worried about getting really emotional and being that emotional bridesmaid. But I was worried about like, that as well. I was a bridesmaid this year. I thought that I'd just be like hella weeping the whole time because I'm a real crier. Yeah. Um, but if you are a bridesmaid, often you've got heaps of jobs and then the adrenaline kicks in and you're just like... You know, you're just but what when you're just zone. like standing up there and you're just kind of like watching. You got you're allowed to cry. Yeah. yeah. Also, a, yeah, a weepy wedding's all good. But like I know, tissues in your in your top. But I, yeah, I would say that there's some <laughs> adrenaline that goes. That I was really surprised that I wasn't just like full weeping. But you've, yeah, you've just got all the stuff that you've got to do and think about, and like you're up there and it's like you're on stage, and so then you're all on like. Oh, I didn't think of it like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah people are watching you, but like in a very generous way. You know, yeah. it's a wedding. <laughs> They're like, "Wow, everyone looks amazing." My only, uh, my only concern is that the bride, the bridegroom, the groom is six foot four, and used to be a basketball player. And the other groomsmen are either brothers or basketball players, <laughs> and wear some heels. I, I think the heels are going to be atrociously yeah, tall. No problems in this scenario. I just, I, don't like, <laughs> I just don't want to be like T Rexing it down. <laughs> Oh god! Yeah, amazing. no. Get something you can walk in. Yeah, that's true. Is Big it platform outside heels. as well? Stilts. Oh yeah, is it outside or inside? Yeah, it's outside. Platforms. No stilettos. Stilettos. Yeah, like nice thick, thick, luckily, thick heels are in. Yeah. Are you saying, Rebecca, that you like tall guys? <laughs> get off it. I was just like, no, if, if, if that was the case, if that was the case, I was just thinking, is Caitlin going to sell tickets? Is, <laughs> yeah, that's it. is there a? <laughs> Do you have a plus one? Uh, yeah. Can it be a plus four? Basketball mom, guys in suits party. <laughs> my mum's actually coming, which is going to be sweet. Oh, oh. Mums at weddings are the, do- most, the dopest. That's probably what I'm most looking forward to. So. I'm look- looking forward to taking my foot off this particular podcast pedal just a little bit. Uh, this year, possibly just overdid a little bit with the two key extra projects. One was the um, Election 17 politicians. Um, the other one was the World Forum, which is a fantastic experience. But it was almost like the purgatory of being at this amazing event, but locked in a changing room. <laughs> yeah. Talking about the event, but you weren't actually at the event. Exactly. Mm. There's not been a, a year with as much change and tests than this year, I think. But yeah, you were the... One of the first people I met in Wellington. It's mostly video in the last year as well. There is a market for stills, but it's very saturated. So if you can have your own personal projects with stills where you can do shoot the things you love, that's great. But I think it's quite a, a lot tougher to um, get those kind of commercial ventures for stills. Mm. Shout out to the wifey. Shout out to the wifey. Big shout out to Nicole. She's been an absolute rock to me she's my harshest critic <laughs> but my <laughs> biggest pillar of support as well just talk to me about some of your highlights and maybe a couple of your lowlights of this last year if you don't mind i think this is probably this this let's consider this my yearly review <laughs> so highlights and lowlights mr chapman sir <laughs> i mean m- moving to a new country new city and changing my profession was a the most challenging thing I've done and I wasn't scared to have something else whilst I was working you know hard on on what it is I wanted to do so credit like I'm incredibly proud of of having the uh, having the staying power to stick with it and go with it and and it has come to fruition so that's the one that's probably that that is an overall highlight of mine that you know, I managed to get it. What what it is I wanted to achieve, I managed to get that off the ground without being 
tempted back to the the dark side. Just give us a quick summary of what that is. So I I, I guess I would say I'm a my freelance I'm a freelance creative director. So now I am developing creative ideas and I am pulling together crews to execute them. So um, maybe a one man production company. Um, yes, primarily working in video, but just with visuals. So a bit of stills and I'd say it's about 80% video, 20% stills now. Lowlights for me is just uh, moving to a new city and not having that friendship structure that I had back at home and my family at home and just dealing, dealing with a, I guess, yeah, a degree of, a degree of loneliness when you come to a new city, despite me having obviously my partner, Nicole, um, here, but there is, yeah, you, you do miss those friendship structures you have. So that's been tough for me to handle. What about your year in podcasting? So in reverse chronological order, I had uh, Tim Brown and Jack Candlish and Trev. <laughs> I can't believe that um, having just come back from a road trip with Jack Candlish. Uh, yeah. And we called the car Trev because Tim Brown entered the competition to name the car. And Jack Candlish thought that he liked Trev the most. And <laughs> Jack Chapman wasn't too keen on Trev. <laughs> he wasn't too keen on Trev in the episode either, was he? He was not. Let's, anyway, I should stop talking in <laughs> second person. Um, so I was on Gabe and Beck, yeah, Wellington Chocolate Factory and Pomegranate Kitchen. And then prior to that, it was Pinnamon and... Annika. Annika. Yeah. Yes. Prior to that was my inaugural podcast with... Face Stipulation was Fashnavi and Peter. That's it. It was quite a challenging podcast, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't think that was the most glamorous introductions to podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> from the, the, from then on, Annika and Pinnamon was really, I really enjoyed that one. A hoot. And a hoot. I've enjoyed, I enjoyed the, the last three, I really enjoyed. One of the things that I've learned this year is that you've just got to take what you've got. And you've got to try and bring out the best in who's sitting in front of you, try and reveal their story. And if you can't, you've got to try and fix it in the edit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's a similar approach I take to uh, filmmaking and videos. Yeah. You've got to shoot it the best you can. And if not, keyframe it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. What have you learned this year, Jack? Um, I've learned that... Wellington community is fantastic and I've learned that Wellingtonians and Kiwis in general are incredibly supportive when it comes to other people wanting to progress. Next year, 2018, what are you looking forward to? Next year, I am looking forward to writing and directing more. I've had a couple of conversations with people around some more directing work and most of all, I'm just excited to just do my own projects, the ones that don't pay any money. Because um, I feel like now I've got to a stage where I have some clients that can keep me af afloat and I, you know, I don't have to uh, scrape at the bottom of the barrel. Um, and that's, I'm kind of humbled by that. And that's, I don't need to keep furthering that. Now I can just concentrate on producing like the work that I love to, to do. So that's going to be, that's the thing I'm most looking forward to, personal projects. Kiora, it's David here, rounding out this second part of episode 65, chatting with my 2017 co-hosts Jen, Caitlin, Rebecca in the pod cave at Boys Dojo Wellington, and separately Jack at a secret location. Listen to part one and more than two years of people making positive dents on society in your podcast app of choice and over at twicepodcast.com. Connect with the show on Twitter and Instagram at TwicePodcast and reach me on Twitter at David underscore Binstead. BizDojo are the first of two organisations who support me to deliver this show. They're creating and facilitating communities of talented, interesting and clever humans pursuing their passions through a burgeoning network of co-work spaces across New Zealand. One of their magic sources is getting the culture right for people to collaborate to do their best work in an inclusive, friendly and respectful environment. With flexible options for small and large teams and contract-free plans to suit any business, go develop and deliver your purpose over at bizdojo.com. 
You can find show notes and links in your podcast app of choice and via twicepodcast.com, where you'll also find today's episode match from the archives. That's episode 42 with Christina and Hugh from Thank You Payroll, which was one of Rebecca's most memorable shows, perhaps for the wrong reasons, but it was still a great and illuminating chat. It's summer holidays here in the Southern Hemisphere. Everyone, and I mean everyone, is either at the beach, the batch, a Kiwi term for holiday home, or roaming the incredible New Zealand backcountry. You should come visit sometime. Everything closes down for a few weeks until mid-January, and it's from then that our 2018 shows with new and returning guests who are making positive dents on society will again start publishing. It frankly blows my mind that you, our listeners in more than 50 countries, lend us your ears. It means so much. I hope the conversations offer inspiration for developing your own creative endeavours too. Show family and friends how they can access this and many other shows on their digital devices by sharing the free gift of podcasting. Start them off by setting them up with this show, twice, two weeks in creative endeavour, and they'll think you're a magician and a scholar. Collider Wellington are the second of two organisations who support me to deliver this show. If you're in Wellington, build your future better by checking out the Collider Wellington monthly programme of largely free events. Access world-class intelligence, hang with some of the smartest people on earth and learn something new. Their goal is to connect thought leaders, emerging entrepreneurs and inspirational experts to support the growth of the greatest little city on earth, Wellington, New Zealand. For all the details, go to colliderwellington.com, which is spelled colliderwgtn.com. It's been an amazing second year of chatting with inspiring innovators, creatives, enterprises, and also the senior politicians and social enterprise world forum experts. Thanks again to the many people who've contributed to this Love Not Money project, either in the foreground or in the background. I especially want to mention the following. Our Phyllis intern, Alana, my guest and regular co-hosts, Caitlin, Jen, Jack and Rebecca, George and the team at Garage Project, Nick Schuring, co-founder of Biz Dojo and his amazing team, Jamie, Philippa and Michelle from Wellington City Council and Wellington Regional Economic Development Agency respectively, all our guests for giving time and insight and for showing their vulnerable sides alongside learns, lessons and laughs. And finally, and probably most importantly, you, our listeners, for lending us your ears. It means so much. Beyond here lie Hogmanay hangovers, most probably, and in audio terms, some of the highlights and outtakes that didn't make the main episode cut. Enjoy. Hey, thanks for having us. No, no, it's been super fun hanging out. Thank you for giving time. And it's just been an absolute pleasure hanging with each of you respectively in the pod cave. Pod cave. Pod cave. We sound like villains, super villains. <laughs> we are. We're the podcasters. <laughs> we say things about we. <laughs> Uncensored. <laughs> Sometimes we say Watch the out. F word. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> she just did it again. <laughs> Caitlin's being assertive. <laughs> Nailed it. What's the, um, what's the worst present you've ever received? For several Christmases in a row, I asked for a super soaker. For, for Christmas because I really wanted a super soaker and one year I just didn't get it and I was like oh that's a shame and then the next year I was like still hankering for one and my sister got one and <laughs> oh, I got shit. and I got a teddy bear oh, no. and I was like yeah um no <laughs> this is unacceptable unacceptable <laughs> so gutted I think I like complained to my mum about it and she was like how do you expect me to remember which of you asked for what and I was just like <laughs> Did your sister want the teddy bear? <laughs> no, she wanted. We both wanted the super soaker. So, like, I'm glad she got a fun toy. I think I stole it a couple of times. As the big sister, it's fine. And what are you hoping to receive this Christmas? I have been doing the thing also where you buy things for yourself on the way. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> this Christmas is kind of early for me this year. But uh, the other day I went. Um, so sometimes when I have to work in the kitchen on Saturday, um, it's a real kind of like treat yourself type situation where I like get in there and I kind of do work but I also like take myself for a coffee and I was on Instagram and I saw that the Fix and Fog little window on Ava Street were doing donuts with the new fructose butter in them. Oh my god. (laughs) Yeah it was epic and so I went and I got a couple of jars of that so I guess that's not what I'm hoping to get but that's what I've already bought for myself this Christmas. (laughs) (laughs) What?
and any new traditions that that you're wanting to introduce this uh, this seasonal year? A tradition in my family, my dad has three brothers and they all bring shit in jars, stuff in jars that they've made and kind of compete with each other. Like, oh, I've made this barbecue sauce. And then we all end up with like hundreds of jars in our cupboards. <laughs> so and a part of me is like, that's a tradition I'd like to kind of like, you know, see see go downhill, but equally this year I am also doing pickles, so <laughs> I'm stepping up to the plate. You're joining in. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like you're, you're, you're fueling the competition. <laughs> That's it. Next generation stuff. Know how to make vegetables taste not shit. Yeah. <laughs> Heaps of vinegar and sugar. <laughs>